What is up, Clevelanders? If you are out there trying to do short-term rental investing, Airbnb, VRBO, all that jazz, you're trying to get that off the ground in the Cleveland market, you're going to want to pay attention to this show. You're going to want to make sure you do the proper due diligence on your properties, and that's exactly what I'm doing today for my guy Dave. Dave, you're an investor from Hudson, you recently purchased a single family house in Mayfield Heights. You're considering turning it into an Airbnb investment. You wanted me uh, to comb through your deal, uh, analyze what you got going on, talk to you about the rehab, potentially running this as an Airbnb, et cetera, et cetera. So without further ado, Dave, let's dive in. This is your show. This is the show where I work for you directly, taking your needs. I'm going through the MLS, and I'm trying to find the best possible deal for you guys. Put down 25%. That's the perfect way to buy this. That's why real estate investing is the greatest industry in the world. Welcome to the show, folks. My name is James Wise, and I am here to help investors like you make money in the real estate space, right? We do that by giving you guys data, analysis, learn from the pros, so to speak, right? If you haven't heard of us, you haven't heard of Holton Wise, you haven't heard of me, uh, we manage a $75 million portfolio in the Cleveland market. I've sold over $200 million worth of real estate in this market, so I know a thing or two. And if you want to work with me one-on-one -on -one like Dave is doing today in this video, uh, you could just book a call uh, by clicking the notes below this video, and my team will hop on the phone with you, explain to you how we could go over your deal, right? And that's what we're doing for you today, Dave. Your property, you just bought it a few days ago. 1386 Sunset Road, Mayfield Heights, all right? You bought it at $92,000, and this is the MLS listing. You just picked her up, 92 k uh, little house right here. Okay, a little setback. They don't really have any MLS photos, but you did send me some photos of where you're at, right? So these are directly from you um, to me via my email address, y'all. Now, uh, it looks like you gutted this or the previous owner totally gutted this, right? So we're starting from square one, including redoing all the electrical, right? It looks like you guys uh, tore out. You had some old knob and tube, and you totally tore out the knob and tube. So we're we're totally starting from scratch on this bad boy, okay? We got to do it all, right, from the ground up on this sucker, okay? So that's what we got. Now, here is uh, the thing with this particular investment, Dave, and this is uh, where I think we really show our true value here at Holden Wise. I'm not going to get on here and talk to you uh, like everything's pie in the sky. I'm not going to tell you what I think you want to hear. I'm going to tell you what I think you need to hear. And unfortunately, uh, it's probably not going to be what you want to hear. It's not good news. I think uh, buying this particular property was a mistake. I do not see a path to profitability for you. So it's good to get out here in front of it before you drop a lot of money because you're going to be throwing bad money after good. I think this uh, was the wrong choice, all right? And I'm going to go over why, okay? Uh, first clue that should show you that you made a mistake is actually going to be our previous owner, the guy you bought it from. Where was he? All right. Let's actually go, let's see here, buyer. Okay, so you just picked it up, 92K. The guy that sold it to you, all right, I think he made the right choice, and I think after he did a little bit more research, he came to the same conclusion that I came to when I started running the numbers, right? He bought it for 94 a year before you did, and this is what it looked like. So this is pre the thing getting gutted out. I don't know if he bought it and then he gutted it uh, and then you bought it from him at 92 a year later uh, or if he bought it, realized the renovations were going to be too big and then you gutted it when you purchased it. But either way, the thing is gutted now. I think this dude come to the conclusion when he bought it for 94, ah, dude, I overpaid for this particular property, which is, is the case for you, brother. You overpaid. Now... It's not 100% your fault, 
that you overpaid, it, it, it's confusing. There are some mistakes that were made, uh, and this is the big one, right? When you're in life, people always tell you the value of standing out. When everybody's zigging, you should zag. Be an individual, stand out, et cetera, et cetera. Well, that's all fine. That's all good. That's great. Except when it comes to real estate investing, home renovations. You never want to stand out. All right? You never want to stand out when it comes to real estate, right? Why? Because real estate is a lot about mitigating risk, Dave. You got to mitigate your risks. When you're doing a deal, you're doing a big rehab, there's an unlimited play of variables or unlimited amount of variables at play at all times, right? You want to take the data, take the information, take the knowledge to eliminate as many of those variables as you possibly can. When you do something like this, you buy an outlier, right? If you look at all of these homes, every one of them, this one, 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 all of them, right? These are all very similar houses, right? All pushed up to the street. They got the detached garage behind it. They got the nice little yard. All very cookie cutter. All newer than your particular home. They're all the same, right? So you can comp them more easily, okay? When you buy the abomination, the abomination, the redheaded stepchild, the outlier, it adds additional variables. It makes it even harder uh, to develop a more accurate ARV, right? So I think that is possibly why you ended up overpaying for this, because I believe uh, you probably looked at some of the data and, and thought maybe you're working with an ARV in the 200s. You're not, brother. Uh, you're only working with an ARV, in my opinion, uh, somewhere in the 150 to 175K range. And even then, it's going to be hard to exactly pinpoint that because it's just such an outlier, dude. And it's not like it's an outlier where it's, like, better than the rest. Like, all the other houses have better layouts, more functional, more appropriate. Like, you literally got the redheaded stepchild, right? So it could never be as nice as the rest homes, the rest of the homes in the area. It's always going to be that wonky little house, right? So I think that's going to affect your ARV, right? So I think you're only working with an ARV of 150 to 175. And here's the sitch, man. Uh, with your purchase price of 92, uh, since it's completely gutted and we're starting from scratch, right? You have to redo all the electrical. You got to do the sheetrock. You got to build the kitchen, build the bed. I mean, dude, with the way labor is, windows, this, that. I mean, dude, you're looking. You could be up to 80 grand on this thing, right? It's hard to pinpoint it exactly from uh, just some pictures. Uh, in where we're at today because it's such a large job. The bigger the job is, the more variables at play. See what I'm saying here? More variables, it, it makes your deal more risky, right? So uh, you can reduce variables by doing smaller rehabs. You can reduce variables uh, on ARVs by doing houses with more comparable data to analyze, right? So we have little to none of that because we bought an outlier house that's an issue we're doing the biggest possible renovation you could do so that makes it tough as well right so i think it could be up as high as 80k to put this sucker back together the right way right so uh if you want to do airbnb after that which is your plan you're looking at another 25k in furnishings right so right there uh your total investment is 197,000, right and that's for a home that in my opinion is only worth between 150 and 175. Now, if the house actually comps out at 175, uh, you know, I guess you're not really like underwater per se because the 25K in furnishings, you know, wouldn't get put into that value. But here's the thing. The house doesn't make any money as an Airbnb, so it'd be a waste to buy 25,000 worth of furnishings because running the numbers as an Airbnb, uh, it's a small, wonky little house. You're only going to, at max, average 150 bucks a night for about 60% occupancy, right? So after you run all the numbers, having Holton Wise do all the management for you, factoring in your vacancy, this or that, the house itself is only going to net you approximately 855 bucks a year uh, after paying for everything. And if you go further with uh, the investment, right, your total investment of 197, if we get it to comp at the best case scenario, 175, which again, that's maybe a little bit of a long shot, the bank's going to loan you back 131K. So you're going to have a total of 65,000 left into this deal. But then after you pay your new mortgage here of 705, 
uh, you're going to be negative $7,605 every year, right? So you're going to be losing seven grand a year. And that was uh, a loan with a 5% interest rate, right? Interest rates are going up and up and up and up. So it's very possible your actual interest rate will be higher than 5%, right? So uh, yes, uh, it's a bad deal all the way around, right? It won't cash flow at all as an Airbnb. I think the 25,000 in furnishings uh, for Airbnb makes no sense because you're going to be losing seven grand a year trying to operate as an Airbnb because your your nightly rents are just going to be too low. You're not going to get enough money, right? So it makes no sense as an Airbnb, and uh, it probably doesn't make any sense for you to rehab it because at that point I still think you're underwater, right? Because even without the 25k. Uh, in renovation, you're right around 175. Well, what the hell are you going to do with the house, bro? At max, it's worth 175. It might be worth less, right? So I think the only intelligent thing for you to do with this particular property is do the exact same thing the guy you bought it from did, which is cut bait. I'm assuming that's what happened to that person. He realized, oh, shit, uh, I'm in over my head. I'm in underwater. I got to cut this fucking loss. And uh, that, Dave is what I believe you need to do with this property. So uh, my suggestion for you now would be to go ahead and just have my team sell this for you in its as-is shape. And uh, we'd be looking for a buyer uh, who would probably want to be somebody who's a handyman who'd want to fix it up and actually live there because that's the only thing that really makes sense because from a short-term rental standpoint, makes no sense. Couldn't flip it, makes no sense. So you really got to hope you find a handy Andy type dude to take the sucker off your hands. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to Holton Wise TV for more financial information, education, and entertainment.